Oh, uh, hello and w- welcome to the Wires uh, Facebook live discussion on Brexit, you know, with the United Kingdom leaving the European Union. Uh, today morning, the results of the vote came in and, uh, you know, the United Kingdom shocked many people uh, by announcing its decision. Shocked the world, actually. Uh, yeah, no, really. Sh- yeah. And the bookies as well, you know, everyone yeah. was betting that uh, UK would stay in, but um, it's not. So, you know, I mean, could, uh, could you tell me a little first about, you know, the leave the arguments presented by the leave camp the remain camp are they would uh, you know did they not convince each other or you know what 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 was what went wrong actually the essentially the the leave camp led by <coughs> the brexit leaders uh, it played on the 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 sentiment uh, of uh, a, the large uh, sections of british working class now the british working class uh, this is not true just for Britain, mind you. This is true for the US. This is true for much of Europe. This is also true for many advanced developing economies. Correct. That wages of the working class have stagnated uh, at levels that existed 10, 15 years ago. You know, Joe Stiglitz, famous World Bank economist, former World Bank economist, has been writing on this. Piketty has been, Thomas Piketty has been talking about this. Right. In the US, uh, working class wages have, in real terms, have stagnated to 2000 levels. Same thing is happening in Britain. Uh, also, uh, the Brexit leaders have played on the fact that uh, that that Britain, uh, the great power, economic power that it was, was driven mostly by steel companies, shipbuilding industry, steel industry. Mm-hmm. All those areas uh, uh, dominated by uh, uh, the white population. Uh, steel companies have shut down. Uh, yeah. Shipping companies shut down. So they are very angry. So mm-hmm. they feel that that this great uh, European experiment, which is part of globalizi- ongoing globalization, has not Still benefited them. So, to some extent... Companies have shut down. Uh, that, shipping that shut down. So, they are very right. angry. Right. So, 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 they <coughs> so there, there's a problem. But, but in my view, the problem is not... Uh, the solution not to move away from EU or just uh, tear asunder the existing socio-economic fabric created by the EU process. Uh, those steel companies are, have shut down because they are not competitive. Uh, the production uh, facilities are shifting to uh, to to the to the to the Asian countries. It's China is producing more steel. Yeah. India is producing. So, so I think they're reading the they're, they're, they're reading the, uh, the the uh, the causes wrong in my view. Correct, correct. Oh. No, but is there some merit to the argument that you know, okay, the EU regulation holds back British industry, or you know, it's making it less competitive? Is there any no, sort of rational to that? Or? Actually, the main anger stems from, in my view, if you look at the negotiations that were going on be- between uh, UK and, uh, and EU uh, the, in Brussels, uh, uh, the main concern that uh, UK has is that of immigration. Correct. There are about 3 million people uh, uh, working in Britain from the rest of EU, work visas. Now, that's part of the EU framework. Yes, and there are about 2 million from UK working in in the rest of EU, EU region, right? So now, now if you have a common, uh, if you have a union, a common market, common currency, uh, free movement of capital, labor uh, uh, is only natural. Now they didn't have problems until it, it was free movement of merchandise uh, and uh, and capital. But labor becomes a very political issue. I think it's just that issue which is which which has angered uh, the people, uh, and they feel that they. They are losing their jobs because of these, uh, you know, large number of uh, influx of workers from outside. Right. Uh, this is uh, this has happened in the past. This happened in other parts of the world also. Right. Uh, but this is not necessarily t- entirely true. It's not necessary that if if these uh, two three million workers uh, from EU region if they move out, yeah. and uh, if the UK uh, those a few million from UK outside they come back. Yeah. And they, the entire economy's problem will be solved. Uh, I think the the problems will remain. Correct, correct. That's true. Now, Michael, can we just talk a little bit about you know the immediate impact that we're seeing after the vote? So, you know, Asian currencies have sort of uh, slumped, and specifically, how how is Indi- how what will happen to India in the short term and medium term when it comes to volatility? Actually, I know the, the the markets, the financial markets, are actually. Uh, expressing this fear and they're discounting the worst possible scenario. And the worst possible scenario is that that the UK, uh, the new prime minister, whoever takes over yeah. and negotiates this disengagement uh, from EU uh, under Article 15, okay. what form of disengagement, disengagement does uh, does UK 
negotiate is it going to be a, a kind of jerky violent uh, moving away from eu uh, tearing asunder the existing uh, you know economic fabric social social economic fabric if that is that's the worst scenario Correct. today the markets are reflecting that worst case scenario it's discounting that therefore the pound has crashed global markets have crashed FTSE has crashed german dax stock market has crashed rest of the world india is also uh, uniform correct so it's almost as if india were part of uk right so correct. if you look at the financial market behavior correct. so there's a lot of currency uh, volatility indian currency is also uh, could be volatile raghuram rajan uh, has expressed the hope that uh, that eu has been buffeted by many crises before greece uh, spain ireland they almost went bankrupt right, right. So, uh, so they su you survived. You project survived those crises. He's hoping that this it'll survive this project. Uh, th this it'll survive this crisis also. Uh, but he also has said uh, the uh, RBI governor that there could be volatility for in the short run over the next right. few months. Things are not going to be uh, so smooth. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, what I mean, what are the steps that we need to take to kind of ensure this? So, in terms of either our forex reserves or you know. Uh, does the RBI have to step in? Or what, 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 what See, there is a from from an Indian perspective, <coughs> there are two three issues. Uh, as I said, one the big picture is if this what is happening in Britain represents a new nationalist protectionist yeah. political sentiment coming out of the heart of uh, Europe, okay. uh, which which uh, you know Britain was the original proponent of free trade, right? Uh, so was the U.S. So I see a, a larger trend uh, where you know, th where the U.S. and the uh, and and some of the European countries could turn protectionist. Correct. That's not good news for India, of course. because uh, today India, China, Vietnam, uh, uh, many of the Asian countries, Latin American countries, are benefiting from the current phase of globalization where production is shifting from from high cost uh, t geographical territory to low cost. Right. So if if the, if this nationalist protectionist sentiment. Uh, halts that process then india china and others will uh, not gain uh, we, we we are we might lose uh, so therefore for instance tatas yeah. because they are cost efficient they they bought up uh, automobile companies in the uk uh, uh, jaguar right, jaguar, right? Yeah. and steel companies now tatas have done well with jaguar right Correct. so th that's proof that what a uk company did uh, inefficiently tatas are doing efficiently now, uh, Tata's through UK are also serving the U EU market. So, Tata's will, will suffer. Correct. Many globalizing Indian companies could suffer going forward. Right. Uh, so, this is not good news for us. Correct. And, and the other good, bad news for us is India's main argument, Indian Commerce Ministry's uh, main argument in all trade negotiations is that we want uh, our, our main advantage is uh, skilled people. So, we want more quotas for movement of skilled people. Correct. So, if this nationalist sentiment, Russian sentiment, puts a kind of uh, reverses that process, uh, then again India doesn't gain. Right. So, th these are long-term political problems. Right. In the immediate uh, term, I think there'll be some problems of capital flows. Yeah. Indian currency is also taking a hit because in, in any such uh, in any such crisis or perceived crisis situation, the tendency of uh, capital is to flow into gold and dollars. So everybody else. The price of gold has shot up. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's only to be expected. Yeah. So luckily, India, the RBI has, uh, in the last few years, has shifted some of its uh, reserves uh, weightage towards gold right. from these hard currencies. Okay. Seeing that these hard these hard currencies could go through the, the kind of problem that you are seeing today, in the context of say Brexit. Correct, correct. So, uh, so, so India needs to be prepared for uh, a, a depreciation of the rupee may go beyond seventy rupees to a dollar. Correct. It has enough reserves, but but then the RBI governor will have to take a call. How much of the reserves is worth spending uh, in in defending the rupee? Right. So uh, he has said that that reserves are are to be used for smoothing volatility. Okay. They are not to be used for determining that our exchange rate should not cross a certain level. You know, you don't de you know you don't determine level. You leave the markets to that. Because that's the arrangement you're in, right? So correct. you allow the markets to find the value of the rupee. Correct, correct. So that, that's the situation. So is this also, yeah. I mean, it's not, not exactly an upside, but for instance, does this also show that our markets are currently sort of, they're on steroids, right? So if you look at the Nifty, it's plunged down to where it was just a one month ago. Yeah. So our, you know, economies like India, are they filled with cheap money and is this now, it's, it's going away? Is this mm -hmm. kind of also uh, showing that, you know, to a certain extent? You know, I feel that our current stock market uh, are not on uh, they don't look like they're on steroids i'll okay. tell you why 
because as current stock market levels in inflation adjusted terms they are the same as they were about 10 years ago right. you know so so in that sense uh, in 2006 uh, uh, inflation adjusted uh, so in, in that sense india has really not gone up yeah and india has not given uh, uh, in dollar uh, adjusted terms india has actually given negative returns to foreigners if somebody had somebody had invested 100 dollars 10 years ago Correct. today he would have got negative return so from that perspective indian market is uh, is not fully priced correct, in correct, my correct. view in my view yeah right, okay. mm. we have a, a, a reader question from jyotir moy talukdar mm. please say something about the snp stand so the scottish national party so uh, where trump is currently so they've you know these scottish scotland mm. northern ireland they've sort of voted uh, for them to remain and you know what would be the consequences of this in an upcoming referendum uh, when scotland you know they'll vote again in a couple of years whether or not to leave Uh, the united kingdom so uh, so well that will be uh, uh, that will be further re- reinforcement of uh, the nationalist sentiment right correct and that's one of the the, the brexit leader the first in his first statement uh, uh, the brexit leaders uh, what did they say they said this this clearly indicates a trend uh, where uh, national identities are getting reinforced and people who want to decide for themselves decide for themselves how they want to trade with the rest of the world so and he also at the, at the same time he also uh, said that that we hope that other euro skeptics w- would follow our example and who are quiet so far sitting on the fence so he in a way he was actually provoking uh, so in that context uh, this if the scots tomorrow decide that they also want to go it alone Uh, that would be probably in line with this uh, present trend and and mind you uh, 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 mr donald trump has welcomed brexit correct no he's correct. also talking about erecting barriers yeah. <laughs> stopping mexicans uh, from entering the place whereas the world knows that it's the mexican workers who are running the, all the hotels there right so correct. i mean right. these are realities which uh, which nationalist uh, peop- politicians who are doing nationalist postures pa- posturing They don't actually understand this reality. You know? Right, right. That's true. I mean, do you, do you, do you think those are lessons? So now already we've seen in the aftermath of this vote, you know, people mm-hmm. in France, in Germany, similarly, again, you know, uh, calling for mm-hmm. uh, a vote, a, a referendum of their own, yeah. you know, wanting to. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, there are a lot of Polish, for instance, you know, low wage uh, workers right. who work in Britain. I'm told that a lot of truck. Uh, drivers are polish right, right. now by accepting low wage now this is the reality of globalization by accepting low wage they they also push down costs for the economy for the people also so now you could argue that wages being pushed down is not good for the people which is also true my point is that globalization has uh, produced welfare gains but the problem is that these gains are now con- are concentrated mostly in corporate profits balance sheets they have not got passed on to the people correct so that is what needs to be ensured not a reversal of the uh, the current process where you throw the baby out of the bath water correct, correct. Mm-hmm. that's true mm-hmm. we have another uh, question from sakshita kosla who do you think are the strongest contenders for prime minister in the uk after camden steps down now so will it uh, uh, someone from who from the conservative party i i wouldn't know that because i don't follow british politics th- that closely i i'm, I'm just looking at Brexit as a purely as a uh, as a political e- economy phenomenon. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So that another question from Siddharth and Sundara. Mm-hmm. So will other countries in the EU follow the same? What do you think the the trend will be? So we know we know you just explained sort of the rationale behind this. You know, yes, uh, the effects of globalization have not uh, trickled down to the lower sections of so- yeah. society, yeah. but uh, what that is that likely, if, yeah, what, what what is the likely trend for for, for other countries? You see, uh, you you know, I sometimes fear that. that all these uh, the political class uh, s- in the especially in the west and this problem is also spilling over to india now they have not seriously looking at the causes of high youth unemployment you know they you know you you have technology driven uh, global output growth but what that is leading to is something like 40% youth un- unemployment in spain uh, in ireland i mean if you look at youth unemployment it is soaring everywhere uh, I, i was even in developing countries i was in africa i was in namibia recently youth unemployment there is also 35% correct economies on the face of it is doing well oh. right so gdp growth is fine everything but uh, why is this gdp growth not producing 
employment? Why is such high youth unemployment? Correct. I think this question, uh, by and large, uh, all global uh, foras, global uh, uh, economic, political uh, platforms, multilateral, UN, I don't think they are really seriously looking at this, uh, of trying to find solution to this. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Whenever you we're talking about youth unemployment, so in the UK, I think there was some statistic on how... In India, youth yeah, unemployment uh, could be anything about 20-25%. <laughs> right, right. Mm. No, no, yeah. that's, uh, that's true. But uh, in the UK, so the, the people above the age of 55, 60, for instance, they are the ones who mostly voted, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the, for the UK to leave the European Union, whereas sort of people who are younger have voted to stay. So, I mean, could you... Just talk a little bit about this. Now, I, um, it's possible that you know the younger lot has voted to stay because they still have some hope. Uh, so uh, that's that's something might come out of this. Right. But but you cannot use just because they voted for stay would not. Uh, does not mean that they are happy with the state of affairs if they are unemployed. Correct. I mean, I, if I am unemployed at say 22 and I vote for stay. Uh, it will be a perverse argument to say that I am happy <laughs> that, that I am unemployed, you know. Correct, correct. Maybe they, they have greater hopes of, of globalization. In a way, that might be a good thing. The older lot has, is not, older lot is actually going, uh, not, uh, has voted for exit, uh, voted right. for leave, because I heard some of the interviews on BBC. Mm. They are on this great nostalgia trip. <laughs> to our great Britain, my father fought in Normandy, etc. You know? correct, correct. So there was a British <laughs> you know, MP right, right, uh, right. who talked about how his father uh, uh, fought with the Allies and you know, landed in Normandy and, and uh, Britain's great glory. So I think that era is over. I mean, uh, UK would be, would be foolhardy on you, on the part of the political class to, to try to sort of you know, revive the uh, early uh, or late uh, 19th century, you know, uh, or 20th century glory, <laughs> early 20th century <laughs> glory of UK. You know, so. Yeah, so I, uh, one, one of the things, so for Indian companies, you know, for like we were just talking about Tata Motors and other people who have manufacturing bases and export to the EU from there. Uh, one of the things that they would definitely like to see, I mean, there's another two, three years before uh, this yeah. Brexit actually happens, uh, you know, whether the Britain can sort of renegotiate the European common market, you know, the way Norway, mm -hmm. that's the most exactly, uh, yeah. commonly cited example. In fact, that is what my uh, assessment also is, that this was a, this was anger expressed by the people that we are not getting the benefit of uh, globalization. So, so having expressed the anger, they have voted for exit uh, majority. Uh, mind you, 48 percent have also voted for a stay. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, now the political class, the whoever is the new prime minister, uh, would be very well aware that that the if 52 percent have voted for uh, leave, there are 48 <laughs> who yeah. also, and uh, the prime minister or the new arrangement uh, or the new regime cannot afford to completely disengage from this uh, uh, fr fr from EU so they will they will soft land Correct. they will negotiate a very uh, uh, kind of optimal disengagement which does not at once take away the benefits of uh, free trade etc that exists today Correct. so that is what I anticipate right. and I think that the main problem again coming back to main issue that UK has is about large number of immigrants uh, who have work visas in the UK. If they are able to reduce that and then tell the people, okay, we have solved your problem because we have reduced it by say 50%. Okay. So, but will that not cause labor shortage in some uh, some specific industries like hospitality? It, it, it will cause labor shortage. <laughs> yeah. That's what I am saying. Yeah. Soft landing means you will definitely, the economy will definitely uh, lose out, but then how, how do you contain the loss yeah. is what is to be watched uh, uh, and what, what the new regime does and that's what people will watch. There will be definitely some initial loss, mm -hmm. right, uh, which they can make up later Correct. through through other means. Maybe they can set up some lo uh, encourage local industry, etc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in the short run, all experts suggest that there will be some GDP loss, there will be some uh, yeah. employment loss. Correct, correct, correct. They'll have to manage that, yeah. That's true. So one, uh, another question from our reader by Aibel Sibi. Will the non-EU immigrants, so people like from India or you know, Bangladesh, will they be affected by this 
orbit makes it, and if so, how? What? 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 What is the future like for them? You mean uh, f uh, how non the non-EU immigrants? Yeah, so people like people from India who have gone there, gone there, okay. there, you know, and uh, you know they. One doesn't know, you know, if, if this whole nationalist uh, identity politics takes uh, gets further reinforced, uh, takes some nasty term, uh, turn later, yeah. uh, this may sort of start working against other immigrants also. Yeah. Now, that's what remains to be seen. Now, if you have a guy like Donald Trump, yeah. you know, if his thought process uh, takes, uh, say, root in Britain, mm -hmm then my view is that all immigrants uh, will feel a bit insecure. Correct. Right. So, but, but they can uh, take heart from the fact, they can, be, they can rest assured that, that, that immigration cannot be done away with because uh, they are the backbone of the low-cost economies that these people are running. Correct. For, instance, for instance, America cannot, overnight cannot send all the Mexicans back because they are the backbone of the hotel industry, you know, the, all the hotel workers are, uh, you know, majority of them are Mexicans. Mm -hmm. So there is a there is a there is a economic logic to it. There's a cost logic to there's an inflation logic to it. Correct. It's a bit like the the campaign against China in the U.S. Whenever there are elections, mm -hmm. China is a fav very favorite whipping boy. Correct. Uh, but without realizing that if if tomorrow they were to if U.S. were to severe all links with China, mm -hmm. all the low cost goods. From uh, from toys to clothing to everything that they enjoy, is uh, courtesy uh, uh, competitive uh, production by China, right? That's correct. So 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 that economic logic, whether it will get reversed, That's I don't know. I, I don't think that will ever get reversed. Correct, yeah. correct. Right. We have another um, question from a reader, Neha Sinha. So this question has to do with you know, will Scotland now ask for another referendum? So you know. It's, uh, people in India might be uh, not overly familiar with referendums, but just generally, what does this mean? The question is, you know, for the proliferation of referendums, will we see it more, yeah. uh, especially for, you know, issues that we may not feel, you know, it's a, referendums are very good when we're on the right side of the issue and we won, but, you know. Yeah. So what does this mean uh, for the proliferation of referendums throughout Europe and Scotland as well? Well, referendums are not new in Europe. You know, the, the Swiss conduct referendums from all small, small things. Okay. You know. Even for some parking uh, dispute in some province, they hold, they hold a referendum, Correct. right? Correct. So, it's, it's uh, in that part of the world, I think uh, referendums are, in my view, are common. Mm -hmm. It's in countries like ours. I think Amadi Party tried to sort of introduce referendums. Yeah, so, I think he, he's, <laughs> he's, some he's some actually issues. called for a referendum <laughs> on Delhi statehood now. Uh, yeah, after yeah, this, yeah, after <laughs> this, he's called for a referendum, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, well, I think it's a good thing. In a way, uh, if you face election only f once in five years, on important issues, uh, it might be worth a referendum. For instance, India might uh, could do a referendum on some pressing economic issue, uh, mm -hmm. whether uh, ask people whether they are uh, happy with the present rate of inflation yes, or should interest rates come down, should deposit rates be reduced. <laughs> you ask the people and get a good answer. No? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's true. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, I mean, so, but also specifically from this instance of a Cameron, for instance, he sort of staked his political future on this referendum, right. and he lost from that uh, yeah, yeah. in in that respect. So, I mean, also they have to kind of you have to be wary on what you yeah yeah uh, in, in, where in, you roll yeah. the dice. You know? Yeah, in a way, th this does create a possibility of of uh, deciding on very very crucial or crucially important political issues uh, midterm. So, in some ways, in the interest of uh, deepening democracy or democratic traditions, it's a good thing. That's true. Right. I think we should encourage this in India. Indian states should actually also adopt this from time to time. Correct. That's true. Also, you know, so I mean, one thing I'm sure everyone wants to hear about the impact. We have one question from Atmijit Singh. So, talking about the impact on IT services and outsourcing, you know, which is uh, quite a thing. So, the, the pound is depreciated a little bit. You yeah. Know, uh, it's sort of stabilized again. So, that is obviously not very good news for our IT companies. Though, yeah. You know, the, though the next two quarters probably there will be some currency headwinds for them. But overall, is this a very big impact on them? See, uh, most, a lot of our IT companies, they bill in dollars. So, if dollar appreciates, the IT companies gain, right? Correct. So, uh, there are a lot of IT companies, uh, uh, they have moved to European territory also. Yes, so, sir, so, there, uh, I don't know how the, uh, how the uh, rupee-euro uh, uh, parity is uh, panning out, 
uh, I think we might gain there also. Correct. So, with any pound, we may not. Correct. So, Correct. because pound is depreciated 10% uh, and probably it might, if it stays that way and India, Indian rupee is not depreciated 10%, so we lose competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis pound. Correct, correct. What yeah. about so if this sort of this increased nationalism, visa regulations, will they become more? Uh, yeah, though those things will get tougher in yeah. my view, I, and they're getting tougher in the U.S. also. Correct. Even Obama, people thought that under Obama, India will have a, a, a more easy uh, work visa regime. But if you ask the Infosys and the and the Wipro's, and they'll they'll tell you things to the contrary. They they'll say that uh, things are tightening rather rather than easing for Indian uh, workers, you know. Correct, correct. Uh, yeah. Actually, we just have, so, uh, Neha Sinha who asked a question on Scottish referendum. So, Nicola Sturgeon of the SNP has just said that a second, you know, Scottish referendum is on the table now. So, that's definitely, that's something that's... Yeah, so, uh, so what, what should we say? We're not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hmm. So, also, you know, when we were talking about, you know, Indian companies which are going there, so one sort of counter-argument here is that, okay, they will lose... Uh, yes, if, if you know they don't have preferential access to the EU market through import tariffs, but Britain, in a sort of uh, strive to become more competitive, might offer more tax breaks, more incentives to, to Indian companies. That's so that might be the silver lining for our, you know Tata Motors and uh, Bharat Forge and uh, whatnot. So will we? So so so, uh, so Anush, they can't offer anything better than what EU is the best case scenario, right? The EU is zero duty on all goods. So what can Britain offer that's better than EU? Will they offer better immigration? No way. So everything suggests that that Brit Britain is not going to, uh, I mean, it's not going to do more uh, than what EU has done. So I think the British economy will take a slight beating. Right, right. That's that's my sense. Correct. correct. And after some time, I think the uh, they'll also realize that uh, that all the the welfare gains of uh, coming from um, from you know a one world kind of uh, uh, situation where uh, uh, you know through uh, <coughs> such arrangements uh, uh, a borderless kind of you know economic uh, see theoretically bo borderless economic arrangements will always produce more gains Correct. that's the logic that we when we talk about GST what are we talking about yeah. we, we're talking about totally reducing all barriers within say uh, whatever 30 Indian states right mm. it will benefit people but that's why I'm saying what is to be seen is how those benefits get distributed that you can do, do through taxation Correct. so I'm surprised that the British people should have said that okay the working class wages have not gone up please ensure that uh, you know we get b benefits you know through higher taxation corporates are making money so, yeah. to, so because this corporate lobbies are so strong they also work against uh, you know uh, more tax tax and kind of spend policies so that's where the political class they they kind of fall between two stools Correct. they want to please the corporates they want to please the people and then they they're not able to you know hmm. Correct, correct. but in the medium term will so india uk trade ties you know uh, will they will there be anything sort of an upside or will there be will it continue well, it is uh, well uk will have to re renegotiate all their bilateral uh, arrangements now separately with India, separately with China. Correct. So so far they were just doing it through EU, which I That's thought was yeah, yeah, that was very efficient, you know. Yeah. So now uh, there'll be more bureaucracy. There'll be uh, UK will uh, have to. Uh, so uh, net net, I think they'll uh, uh, they'll have to sort of uh, start everything afresh. Uh, so you don't know what terms they'll give China. If they give China uh, uh, worse terms than what EU has given China, then uh, UK's inflation will go up because they erect <laughs> tariffs for Chinese imports. Correct. Ultimately, who people will pay for it? No. Right. right these, right. these politicians don't pay for it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in terms of you know choosing the next RBI governor, you know, mm. sort of will step down mm. in September. Mm. You know, what 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 is that? Uh, what does the next governor have to sort of look forward to over, you know, the next six months definitely, yeah. do you think there will be some sort of... You know, the I'm a bit yeah. disappointed that, that Raghuram Rajan has been allowed to leave the way uh, uh, the way it's happening. Yeah. Because I thought his biggest strength was his understanding of the global markets, currencies particularly, right. the bond market. I don't think uh, any of the bureaucrats who takes over as RBI government will have any clue about what's going on, you know. And the all the uh, all the the, the 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 volatility that we are importing from these kind of situations, right? Brexit and you know uh, 
what may happen in the US elections also. Yes, so, uh, so well, his replacement is very critical. If it's, we need to get somebody who has some global experience. You know, of so we, uh, you can't sort of uh, look at whether he's mentally Indian or not Indian. And these are, uh, I think we uh, we have to avoid uh, these kind of. Uh, metrics to decide That's who true. the RBI government should That's be. True. That's true. Yeah. There we have another question so from Mr. Shriram. Again, so yeah. in general, how should how much should we depend on referendums for very big ticket decisions mm -hmm. like this? You know, uh, we've addressed it a little bit, but I mean, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, of course, this, but this was a really big ticket decision, right? So uh, if tomorrow, I mean, I'm, I can give you an equivalent. If tomorrow India were to go into a uh, say massive uh, trade, uh, uh, similar EU type of trade arrangement with China. Correct. People might ask for a referendum, you know, <laughs> because there's a, there'll be huge fears about whether we'll gain from it or lose from it. Um, and uh, even today, our Indian businesses can't decide whether <laughs> even a preferential arrangement with China, either directly or through RCEP, some of the trading arrangements Correct. which are being discussed, right yeah. which will help us or not. Yeah. So. Uh, so it it really it affects the lives of the people. So so I think it's valid uh, that yeah. ref referendum sh should happen. Personally, do you do you I mean in your experience? Or, or otherwise, yeah. if you don't have referendums, correct, then you'll you'll see the result in in a normal election voting, that's right? Tr that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Correct. it'll indirectly come out. Yeah, it'll uh, indirectly come out. Yeah. But do you personally sort of do you uh, feel it's it's better that this sort of decision came out through a referendum rather than an act of parliament or? you know, a government's uh, decision. I think it's, it's it's better that it comes out of referendum because what it does is it allows people to vent their, you know, yeah. feelings. So that's, in my view, very important. Correct. Because now, after having expressed their anger, yeah. if the new regime uh, does a little pragmatic, uh, you know, halfway, middle, uh, adopts a middle path, the same people may even accept it. That's true. Because they've been allowed to express their anger once. You know. Correct. But it's also tied the new regime's hands a little bit, right? So if he wants to sort of negotiate a new mm. a treaty for common market access, but he still can't give away too much, right? Because uh, based on this referendum. So yeah. It, obviously, it can't be the same arrangement. Yeah. It will be a worse arrangement uh, in terms of overall gains. But if it is not, if you can minimize that, uh, that the losses. Correct. Uh, maybe people will accept it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So I think we got, we got another. Oh, uh, Mr. Rustam Panda. <laughs> no, sorry. Okay. All right. So I think uh, are there, is there anything else that you want to let our readers know about this issue? What are anything? I think we are living in interesting times. Correct. We'll see how this pans out for India and for the rest of the world. Yes. Yes. That's Thank true. you. So thank, thanks. Thanks for watching our Facebook live.